Eve. Let her breathing quicken with her first pulse. Offer her the apple so that all your doings may be guiltless, that your days may be long in the lands she will give you. Let not your heart be troubled, let not your soul be torn. Though already there is lightning in the quicksilver sky, you will not be tainted. She walks towards us through the foliage, her arms enfold us in a manner we did not know, her kisses already a foretaste of the flesh to come. No motion in her yoni, but the earth's moistening, birth of the first sanctity to confound the god of hate as he stalks in the garden, or rapacious in his judgment. Adam. It lies agape, that first bloodshed, and already life is over, smashed on rocks. He slowly moulders, the Holy Spirit pecks his eyes. God, not creation but slaughter, his flame in the foliage, in a moment only the flowers turn to ash, mystic collaboration, two souls torn apart by the sudden teeming force of their own thoughts, no garden but a rock face, no pools but a desert, Lizard claws scratch faces, the first icons of his worship that offers no answers. Memories of one guilt alone, their squeals in the orchard, morph now to a shema of shame. Trial Peace Two high priests in chasubles. Who are the acolytes? Who the sidesmen? Annas and Caiaphas with berettas on. But who held the thurible? And who did the readings at this proto-mass? This ornate and intricate liturgy? And who was it stretched him out in this blueprint for a pogrom in honorem trinitatis? The hearers already had us. In the bidding prayers of Anschluss, we answer without flinching. Who will cleanse the vessels? And who pronounce the blessing? Who, in evil's triumph, will lament love as it bleeds? Africa. Not a crimson robe, but a patchwork quilt. And not the pain of ours, but the agony of decades too silent to be spoken and too shameful to be prayed. The crosses on their rosaries heavy, too formal now to tell us that the letter T is sacred, blessed by the gene of joy and offering more than a slim hope to the woman who kneels wailing for her wasted sons, who one day will be comforted. Calvaria. The voices begin, become distant, then return. Should there not be singing now, an opening of the heart to celebrate, Already they have stretched him as far as he will go. His sinews burn brightly in the nearness of carried flames. Torches they press against him to elicit what answer. 
vomit filling his mouth and sweat his eyes, the chalice already filling with fragments of flayed flesh. The voices begin, are distant, then return. Should there not be singing now, singing and sacred music, to him this hallowed moment, in all its precious power? Golgotha. Better to forget it. Drive it ever downwards and seal it with a song. Better to obliterate it. Say your prayers softly and let the spirit come. The devil on his skull heap calls forth the psychoses of legion. Emerging from the dung heap they goad the latest victim, as in the distant city a Chazan's mannered chant already serves to liturgize and sanitize the scourging. It is better forgotten, all of it. Our minds deny the horror. Plant it with lilies, make of it a garden, and come before it with timbrels and dances. In the night season also. Hear her as she cries, just the smallest cry. A whimper in the watches. The pictures all around her playing. Cobalt, ivory, lead and gold. Their colours a quartet. Its music a movement of eyes. Pupils fixating never to dilate or shift their interminable, determined stare. Hear her as she dares to raise a hand, pick at bedclothes, chance the slightest breath. There is nothing now to pray for, no point even to the muttered reassurance. It is the colours that matter, each shade a scream, each nuance and encroachment never to be reversed now, the sun too set to shine ever again. Hear her as she cries, so fetal and so lost, drowning in rivers of the gathering night. Pascal, allowing the chant to start, his ultimate concession and sense fractured, over sundry bellies hollowed the elongation of hope, making itself soul-like, we smell the sudden burning of it as every action, our breathing quickens with the candle flames sputter, Imagine thus the memory of it, the women hysterical over the pounded and weed-draggled earth. Forget the smashed hands, and let of it come the howl of prolonged exhalations, not mercy or anything approaching it in the imagined morning, as Gehenna opens its jaws on the latest heap of bleeding. Stabat Mater, not the mother alone, but the son also, shares in the force seep, the court breath. At ten at night, the dark is almost fallen, and through the open door of shape waits visitant. Taking no account of the pulse's fading struggle, or of the glaring light that transfigures faces grey. This is intransigence itself, it says, and of this torture. Nothing can come but the end that all must know. This is the time 
When laughter turns to weeping, when tongues must fail, when life blood cease to flow. What are these pictures? What are these sounds? And what the hallucinations? Mother and son know them, but cannot speak, cannot express the hunger that makes of final hours a mask of fallen Eden, a mass of writhing bodies, and not a hymn or ave to be heard, only the hiss of silence that might be serpents or singing, set at a pitch not even hounds can hear, intent on spore. The bitter pus of Lazarus, no Abraham to comfort, no love that will endure. Is this the sum total? Is this the meaning of sanctity? No answer, says the moon, though even it suggests a different order, perpetuates the same illusion that makes of words a foolishness, of thoughts a blasphemy no pontiff can absolve. No prayer of hope cancel, though countless men have tried, stretching themselves on altars and mental racks, seeking the God they desire and therefore create, knowing nothing but the silence that would otherwise be hateful, giving no hate to give disguised as love. Is this what it means? Is this the final saying? No answer, says the moon, which has no ending. <laughs>